Welcome back everybody. Hopefully you're all having a fantastic day. Great weekend. Uh, today we're going to jump right into the story. Um, again, same hospital as last time, surprisingly. Uh, it's a Friday or Saturday night, I believe. So it's pretty busy in there. The normal riffraff. So I'm spending quite a bit of time in the emergency room area. Uh, as security in a hospital it tends to be Somewhere you spend some good amount of time. So I'm sitting down there, checking to make sure everything's going all right. And uh, one of the staff members tells me there's an ambulance on its way in for an older gentleman who apparently went down a pretty steep embankment. Um, and the backstory was even better. So... As it was told to me, this gentleman was highly intoxicated and decided he was going to pick a fight with his significant other. And she was not intoxicated and apparently gave him a good whooping, um, which included pushing him down an embankment. Uh, it's not funny. Domestic abuse is not funny at all, but... When you hear the rest of the story, you'll kind of chuckle at that part. So, apparently the ambulance got there, strapped him down to the backboard, all that happy stuff because of his fall. He gets to the hospital, and as soon as he's coming through the ambulance bay doors, he's running his trap. How He was a past military veteran and flew helicopters and the normal stuff drunk people say. So I could tell it was going to be a pretty interesting little visit. So I stuck around the area. Um, a few minutes later, the state police bring in what I assume was the wife or significant other, girlfriend, whatever they were. Um, because apparently she had some injury or possible injury or something. So uh, the state police brought her in. And they're out talking to her. Doing whatever they're doing on their side. Uh, at this point, there's three of them. Uh, I believe they were getting information on what happened to the mail so they could see if there's charges to press or something like that. But of course, I was only hearing bits and pieces over the, uh, the loud yelling of this other gentleman. At this point, he wasn't uh, necessarily being watched by security, but because he was being belligerent, we kind of stay to the area. So I'm sitting at one of the desks watching the cameras, making sure everything's going all right with the rest of the campus. And uh, I'm going to show you guys a little drawing, kind of explain what happened here. All right, so here is a quick little drawing I made of the layout of the inside of the emergency room area as, as well as the parking lot and area outside. So starting off on the right side, this is the ambulance bay. Um, right in the middle at the bottom is the main entrance to the emergency room waiting area. And then to the left is another couple parking spots and I can't really show you grade, but that's a fairly steep hill, um, which uh, comes into the story a little bit later. So we'll start by making the, uh, the drunk guy red. Uh, we'll make the state police blue and I'll be green. And let me show you what happened here. Apparently there was no staff watching this patient and apparently he got out of the straps on the backboard. He comes out of the room, uh, decides he's going to head toward the ambulance bay. And he walks down toward the, where they actually park. And at some point in here, he managed to strip down all his clothing. And proceeded to make his way to the front of the emergency room entrance here, which goes into the waiting room area. Which in turn leads him into the receptionist area. 
uh, which unfortunately there was a receptionist in there. At this point, I was in the regular ER area, and I could hear hollering coming from the receptionist area. So I, in turn, make a beeline for that area to find out what's going on, make sure everybody's safe. And to my unpleasant surprise, I find a completely nude person standing in the receptionist area yelling at the receptionist. Not cool. I also hear another male voice yelling from the waiting room. So I look over and sure enough, there's a bunch of kids in there and a bunch of different uh, patients just sitting there waiting to be treated. I motion for them to go into this room over here, which had a solid door on it and would prevent the children from seeing this extremely intoxicated naked man. After a few moments of trying to convince this guy to move to the side so the receptionist could get out of there, uh, he finally moved enough and I was able to get between her and him and get her out of there. And she went and got the attention of the state troopers. Um, I'm standing here still talking to the guy and then I hear footsteps come up behind me. And all of a sudden I hear a rattling of a can. Now... If anybody's heard pepper spray cans rattle before, yeah, it was that sound. And I just had this envision that this trooper was going to fill this room with pepper spray. And I was between him and the person he was spraying it at. If you recall from the last story last week, I tend to get into these situations where I'm between some funky situations. After a few moments of some shrewd negotiating, I was finally able to convince the guy to go back out to the waiting room and then go outside, uh, which we followed him out. And I stuck around this area by the front door or the doors to make sure nobody came out or in and was in harm's way. Um, then uh, the other two troopers finally come out. Um... And this guy's arguing with them back and forth. I don't recall exactly what was said. But eventually he decides he's going to try to run up this hill. Um, this hill was extremely muddy. Uh, it was actually a construction area. And it was raining that day. And it was just a nasty mess up there. And sure enough, he uh, face plants right into that old mud. Uh, he's down for a few seconds but still running his trap. That eventually he does get up. Uh, he ended up coming back down the hill. And at this point, all four troopers, uh, forgot to mention earlier, there was one outside in his cruiser. Needless to say, when everybody was outside, he ended up getting out of his car. So anyways, uh, this guy finally comes back down, and again, he's being extremely aggressive, just running his mouth, this and that. He can fight anybody, and, you know, the typical uh, drunk people talk. So, uh, he decides it's a good idea to charge at the trooper that was actually behind me originally, um, who still had his pepper spray in his hand. I'm guessing you can imagine what happened next. Yeah, the guy got sprayed. Direct shot right into the face. It was awesome. I mean, shouldn't say that. But he uh, charged at the police. Uh, needless to say, at that point, it, he was inca incapacitated. So they were able to uh, put some cuffs on him. Uh I believe so. one of the staff members brought a blanket out or something to wrap him in so they could get him back through the doors without scarring the children even more. And at that point, he was in their custody for multiple charges, I'm sure, on top of whatever else he had before any of this even happened. And that was uh, the end of, end of that day. So... No matter how drunk you are, you're probably not going to be able to take on four state troopers. I think he might have learned his lesson. Probably not, though. Most of them don't. 
uh, that pretty much sums up that story, guys. Uh, hopefully everybody enjoyed. Um, when I look back on it, it's got some funny parts. Uh, it is serious, of course, um, but you got to laugh at life, you know. you got to laugh at the different situations you're in. Um, feel free to share any stories you guys have uh, below. You know, type them out. I read all your comments if you leave them, so it'd be really cool to hear what other people have had happen at their jobs um, that is just strange or out of the normal. I greatly appreciate you all sticking around, listening, watching. Um, no backwoods driving this time, just normal paved roads, but hopefully the scenery is kind of nice. Uh, next week I'll share the story of when I caught a... Uh, a theft ring and that adventure uh, that was another good one so uh, come back next week uh, if I don't start my new project by next week we'll do another story if not it'll be the week after so thank you everybody for watching and we'll talk to you next time